Welcome to Gu Dao Jingxing, Walking the Timeless Way, a podcast that digs deeply into the ancient texts of Tao Te Ching to uncover its timeless wisdom and discuss how to apply it to today's chaotic world. I'm Ian Felton, practicing psychotherapist and coder, and I'm joined by my co-host, executive coach and consultant, David Wong. Good morning. Happy late, uh, happy Thanksgiving a couple days after, David. Good morning, Ian. Yes, uh, belated, uh, you know, happy Thanksgiving. Well, today we're going to talk about chapter 64, and I know a lot of these chapters I'll probably say are some of my favorites because obviously we really love this text, but, but this chapter does have many of these sort of famous sayings that a lot of people don't realize came from Tao Te Ching, but have And So we'll, we'll get to explore some of those today in, in our reading of chapter 64. Great, great, great. So I'll, I'll start. Yeah, that'd be great. Qi an yi chi qi wei zhao yi mo. Uh, so this first line, uh, the uh, here it, it says, situations are easier to control when they are steady and stable. Problems are easier to solve before they come to light. So, you know, this first line uh, is a continuation of uh, chapter uh, sixty-three. Uh, the last chapter, uh, you know, we talk, we've been talking about uh, Wu Wei, the one of the fundamental virtues or Taoist virtues of, mm. of, of a sage or a wise person. So the secret to Wu Wei, uh, you know, in this chapter and the last chapter, uh, you know, Lao Tzu seems to uh, point toward this ability to uh to to discern and uh, confront something in its earliest stage before they uh really kind of uh, take shape and and get out of control so this line is another example of that when i read this line uh i'm like a piece uh, like a steady stable uh or secure uh immediately you know, I think of the current situation. Uh, you know, now we are fortunate to have the uh, you know elect election results uh, coming out, and what the you know the transition team is trying to do is to um, kind of lower the temperature mm. and uh, stabilize the situation and reduce the the divide a little bit in order to make it easier to govern. So that's the example I see, like, you know, from, let's say, Biden's team, uh, he was trying to uh, introduce some more peace to the society uh, mm -hmm. to, in preparation uh, for the new administration. Yeah, that, that part of um, those first four characters, Qi An Yi Chi, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. uh, again, if... The more peace I can create, the the more easily I can handle the situation. So looking at there's this sort of Taoist principle happening and and what the new administration is trying to do. The the more that we can create a peaceful, calm conditions, the easier it will be to handle this transition. Yes, yes, that seems to be the prerequisite or the precondition for you know fur further policies and steps to uh you know build back you know better mm -hmm. yeah i think that's a a great a, a example and and one where obviously the stakes are very high mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so continuing on qi cui yi pan qi wei yi san mm. It's easy to melt that which is fragile, 
that which is small is easily scattered. And what we can kind of get from this is that when 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 things are are young, they're they're tender, mm-hmm. and 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 obviously that which is sort of tender can be easily shaped and and whereas once things have become hardened and 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 solid they're a lot less e- easier to to work with and so melting that which is fragile scattering that which is small it's just that continuation of um that earlier sentiment and and we can also look at this from a psychological perspective within relationship counseling or, mm-hmm. or j- just in, in, in relationships that when there's small disagreements in relationships, if each person can discern those kind of going back to the discernment can, can notice that there's, this um, feeling that's that's present at the time, they can go in and handle that through communication, talk through these feelings, work something out. Hey, when you you know do this thing, I, it, it really feels like you know, you're not considering me. Can we find a different way to uh, address this? And and dealing with things at that time at that level is going to be much easier than waiting for a a resentment to build and now this resentment is this huge boulder that what maybe started off as just a small problem that could have been addressed with some simple communication now is this giant boulder of resentment that is is going to be you know maybe impossible to overcome maybe it means the end of the relationship Right. I like that metaphor, the boulder. It's it, it just, it, you know, it's hard to kind of uh, to tackle. And uh, I guess in a lot of relationships, that resentment or, you know, eventually that uh, distrust, right? Uh, it's so uh, monumental that it's kind of a harder, feels harder to fix. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the next line, So based on the earlier you know, observation, uh, so when things, uh, before things uh, take shape, uh, kind of deal with them, uh, set things in order uh, before things plunge into kind of chaos. That's the kind of the meaning for this line. Um, yeah, when, when you think about it, uh, that's a lot of, uh, you know, wisdom, uh, in our, uh, in our sayings, right. In both, uh, in Chinese and in English, you know, like some of the sayings, like, uh, uh, you know, fix it before, uh, before things break or kind of, a, a stitch in time saves nine. All mm-hmm. these old sayings, mm-hmm. I think, have an element of it, uh, you know, really kind of beyond a certain threshold, things get exponentially uh, complex. So you'd better kind of are able to s- see it before they appear. So it's very good advice for, for life. I guess for a lot of aspects in life, you know, our personal life and, uh, you know, businesses and even nations. Hmm. And, and we keep seeing this theme of addressing things when they're er- early in the process rather than, than later in the process. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's part of a, a way in order to be, able to be uh to 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 be in that state of wu wei i guess the the wisdom here is it seems like uh you you have to kind of uh, handle it when 
you it, it, it doesn't expend a lot of time and energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and and continuing in that same mold, the chapter continues. Wood that is carried in the arms grew from tiny dust, obviously talking about tiny pieces of, of pollen. Mm-hmm. Nine floor temples came from bricks of mud. And then here's the famous line that, that everyone knows from this chapter. A thousand kilometer journeys start with a footstep. Yes, yes. That's the, uh, it's very uh, frequently quoted. And and I got the lucky roll of the dice. I got to read that. Sentence today. <laughs> yes. Um, so 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 uh, tell us something about your thoughts when you read this line. Well, while the earlier sentences in in this chapter kind of are the negative side, kind of talking about handling things when. They're really small. Mm-hmm. Lao Tzu does us the favor of also showing us how it works in a positive way, which is that if we want to do something significant, we also still only need to focus on the small, that no matter what it is that we're doing, addressing the tiny thing in front of us is what's always Im- important. And behavioral science is is going to uh, agree with that that you know when it comes to trying to get people to make new habits or change things up or or do um something differently trying to identify small little chunks um and to to proceed with that's that's the way to get that change to happen otherwise it can feel like um you know kind of eating away with if you will that it'll the task will feel so giant that you won't you'll lose the motivation to do it but if you can just focus on the next tiny task or the next tiny piece of it then that of course is how people can find a way to keep staying motivated to take one more step forward yes uh this line also reminds me of a saying you know, great things take time. So, you know, like the wisdom of being patient, uh, you know, if, you know, if you observe nature, you know, for a big giant, uh, you know, tree, you know, I, every day when I uh, do the jogging, I actually, I I ran past uh, a big giant oak tree with the Spanish moss Mm. uh, here in Florida. You know, sometimes I wonder how long it took for that tree to grow to the current size. Mm. Um, you know, like things like that. Uh, I think sometimes uh, in our society, we, you know, under a lot of uh, pressure to, you know, to show achievement, you know, to accomplish things, uh, get early results. I think nature is a constant reminder that sometimes those things uh, worthwhile, those things great, uh, it just takes time mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and patience to build uh, from a, a, a small base. Yeah, the, the, the patience and the, um, the time. I mean, that's what's, what's really critical is that it's it's the patience that that is is the critical piece yeah time seems to have a uh, kind of a follow a law of the compounding right the compounding Mm -hmm. effect of time is quite incredible you know 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, next line. 违者败之，执者失之。Um, if you force too much, you will actually uh mess up things more often. If you grasp too hard, you are more likely to lose it. Uh, you know this is a、uh, the kind of a a. A paradox that you read a lot in、uh, Dao De Jing, and、uh, I also remember、uh, in other spiritual texts such as the Bible,、uh, there are a lot of paradoxes similar、mm. to that.、Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I find it fascinating that、um, you know no one likes to fail,、Mm-mm. no one likes to. Lose, right?、Mm. But sometimes, you know, the consequences or the results don't necessarily,、uh, you know, agree or align with our best intentions. So I think here, kind of, we are reminded of, you know, things like this, and、uh, and give us a time to kind of reflect that.、Um, You know, how do you? What are the things? What does it take to, uh, to 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 kind of to really、uh, achieve what we really want? I think a lot of times, ironically, it's、mm-hmm. in diverging, uh, in, you know, in two directions. Yeah, that we feel like we have to take control of things, and and Lao Tzu here is is actually saying. No, what we actually need to do is let go of our self motivations and and look at how to how to harmonize.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And、uh, he elaborates on that more in in the next sentence. Sure, you, Shang Ren, Wei, Gu Bai, Wu Zhi. Sure, because the sage doesn't act, therefore he can't be defeated. He doesn't try to control, and therefore doesn't lose. And when, what I think he means by that, when when people are trying to win, they're they're really trying to put their own ego. And self-centeredness above everything else, and that's not how the sage looks at the world. the The sage looks at 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 himself as just part of a bigger whole. And if if we're able to see ourselves that way, obviously, then winning ceases to exist, even as a concept. And so our actions aren't. Aren't manifesting that way. They're they're manifesting as a way of of creating harmony. So, an an example I might use is playing playing music. That、mm-hmm. when when you're playing your part in in a song and and say that you're in a in a band. Mm-hmm. If you're playing your part in a way to stand out, where people are noticing you rather than than you know the whole the whole song that's coming out, the music is not going to be very good. And if everyone is doing that, the music is going to be actually pretty horrible because it'll be pretty obvious to the listeners that oh these none of these musicians actually care about. Making good music, they're all up there just trying to kind of stand out. But if everyone in the band is putting their selfish interests at the bottom and thinking about how to harmonize their part with every other part and put their egos aside, that's when the music is going to be beautiful. And that's exactly what 
is being said in, in this sentence that you, you can't be defeated if you're not concerned about winning. If, if what you're trying to do is play your part in perfect harmony with all the other parts, then you're not trying to control, you're not trying to win, and that's you know, the virtuous way, that's Tao Te Ching. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Um, this actually raises an interesting question. So what you're saying, uh, Wu Wei, Wu Wei is, is like, um, you say like if you act with a, an eagle or if you try to win, at the expense of the uh, the the others, that's called uh, th that's the kind of way, right? Uh, because like people talked about, um, you know, I guess in our culture, there's a lot of emphasis on on, on winning, right? On trying to uh, uh, avoid a kind of a failure. You know, you even hear uh, you know the the uh, uh, a quote something like. Uh, if you can avoid failure, if you do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing, you mm -hmm. know, the kind of a motivational, inspirational yeah. quote. But I guess like in here, that's not what Lao Tzu is really saying. No. Lao Tzu is saying is, um, so Wu Wei Gu Wu Wu Bai, it's not like you do nothing, so then you don't experience failure. What he's really saying is, if you act, if you don't act with your strong ego, then there's this no notion of this failure. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. almost like yeah. let me think about again, uh, like a pres like a Trump, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if he thinks about his doing as a way to serve the American people, then there's no such a trauma of, we, of, of, of losing that mm -hmm. even on Thanksgiving day, mm -hmm. he constantly thought about it while the other couple, Biden mm -hmm. and his mm -hmm. wife, made calls to you know, mm -hmm. the frontline people. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that is yeah. a kind of a stark contrast between like the what kind of a mindset your mindset of like a winning 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 can we just say just to put it out there that donald trump is probably the least Taoist president that we'll probably ever experience in our lives uh, that's probably an understatement <laughs> so we've we've got um a little bit more to get through in in this chapter so i'm just going to keep keep That's, going um, yes and then we sound? can yeah then we can return to some of the uh you know deeper discussion okay okay uh 明知从事, 常于几成而败之. uh so when people you know are working on things sometimes on the verge of their, their success, uh, they are on a trajectory to failure. Again, this is an observation that, you know, a lot of people experience, you know, in sports, in business, maybe in other, you know, arenas of life. Mm. What are some other thoughts that you have on on how that how that happens, or maybe some other um, ideas from Chinese culture or 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 otherwise of of how we can co commonly understand that idea? Mm. Uh, there there seems to be a lot of causes, you know, uh, pride can be one of them. Sometimes, you know, we are so excited and we're carried away. We start to lose sight of any kind of danger. Mm. And then 
<laughs> you, you you just like you you just you know you fall apart or fall down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so pride is one of them. Sometimes um, I guess exhaustion. You know, sometimes you feel like you have mm-hmm. tried already tried very hard, but the last yard or last mile, mm-hmm. then you know you you falter. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess at the end of the day, fundamentally, uh, a lot of people experience that because of uh, a loss of attention or focus seem to be the a, a common cause. And then the very reason that we lose attention or lose our presence is because of other emotions, you know, mm-hmm. pride, neglect. Mm-hmm. Uh, complacency, uh, inertia, all mm. these can play a, a role, all these psychological, ex, you know, uh, all these emotions. Yeah, it makes, it makes me also think about like when they talk about follow through and different sports where how important the follow through is that he, he like, I, I don't golf, but I know that that's a, a popular one where Mm-hmm. In, in your swing, even after you've hit the ball, how important the follow through is to keep, you know, and and I think that's sort of that way of training that mindset of, you know, making sure that you're still paying very careful attention all the way through that whole process, even throughout the end and, and beyond so that you're in, ensuring that there's as little chance of failure as possible. I see, I see. Mm-hmm. And so I'll continue. Shen Chong Ru Shi, Zhe Bu Bai Shi. If there's care all along, just as from the start, there will be no defeat and essentially really harmonizing with with what you just read and and the golf metaphor of of following Mm -hmm. through on your stroke is still um, apt there but i i think we we can still use uh, other pieces from this chapter to illuminate this just the journey of a thousand kilometers for example that there really is no such thing as a journey of a thousand kilometers there's just a series of single steps that are taken one step at a time one step at a time and that it's every single unit that that matters not the grand thing Mm -hmm. it's that tiny little action that matters whatever that next tiny little action is i mean think about how a a beautiful relationship can be ruined in one moment of anger with someone saying something Mm -hmm. very mean that 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 lasts you know a second or two that it's all these tiny little things that matter and just the mindset of the sage of being very careful about whatever that next small step is because that next small step is is really everything exactly exactly uh this particular line also reminds me of two things one is uh you know throughout the chinese history you know every dynasty the founders remind their uh children that it's relatively it's harder to sustain the empire than build the empire. Mm. Uh, because once you have the empire, you can start, you know, kind of feel like you can afford to indulge yourself. Mm. So they live a, a, a life that is, uh, you know, not moderate and sometimes exhaust the people under their reign. So, uh, you know, I, I think when you read a lot of the, the 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 reminders of the emperor, like Tang Dynasty, uh, uh, you know that period was kind of the golden age of China. Uh, the Tang Taizong, 
uh, I remember reading some of the the letters uh, during his old age for his son. Uh, you know that was emphasized. So that's mm-hmm. one thing I remember. Uh, I I'm reminded of as I read Sheng Zhong Ru Shi. The other interesting thing is in recent years, as you know, in China, the Chinese Communist Party it has launched this anti uh, anti-corruption campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the s- slogan is uh, from the top was to ask the communist parties uh, at all levels and throughout the country uh, to remember their beginner's heart. Mm. Uh, in Chinese is uh, mm-hmm. is don't forget. Chu is the beginner's uh, mind or beginner's heart, lao ji shi ming, and hold steadfast, uh, hold uh, to remember uh, uh, your your initial mission. So basically, it was remind the parties. Originally, it was founded on a, some kind of a idealistic notion uh, to uh, you know to save China. Uh, you know, in nineteen back. In the 1920s, mm. all these younger people the, who uh, uh, secretly actually founded the party under the nationalist rule, because at that time, the nationalist party was very corrupt. Mm. Uh, so nowadays, uh, you know, I, I think people, uh, especially at the top, they are so, uh, so um, worried mm. that this widespread corruption will bring the downfall of the party. Mm-hmm. So I think ask them to remember what was this party was founded for. It was kind of a, as a part of the, the initiative kind of to, uh, you know, to, to avoid the uh, failure of the party. And it's interesting because it, it does demonstrate another use of the discernment that we've been talking about so much of, of unlike what I would say we see and we're seeing in this country, which is a failure to look at history, a failure to understand history, mm-hmm. a failure to even consider that we're repeating things that have you know taken place over and over again, that what you're talking about is looking back at that pattern of like, hey, when when corruption begins, that's when a fall, a, a great fall is likely to occur. And so as soon as we start seeing sort of those first signs of, of corruption, we need to go back and start now working on the heart of people, the hearts and minds of people and, and getting them to reconnect with the antidote for, for that, like at the very early part of that process. Yeah, I, I sort of feel like uh, every organization or every nation, uh, when they are in a kind of uh, uh, a, a very challenging situation, a leader usually will remind people, we need to go back. Like I, I remember during like Reagan's time, you know, there was like this emphasis on Re- rediscovering the founding principles or the or the foundation of this nation, you know, uh, I think that way. I guess it's another way of trying to show the current generation uh, and use history as a mirror uh, and as a, a, a kind of a reminder. Certain things get kind of repeated uh, if we don't. If we don't fall, you know, looking at 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 it or learn from it. Okay, so let me uh, try to finish the uh, the 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 uh, the lines, uh, you know, for this chapter. 是以圣人欲不欲，不贵难得之货，学不学，负众人之过。Um, uh, here it says. So the sage uh, desires not to desire. In other words, 
is a lot of the desires of the common people. Sheng Ren is, uh, you know, trying to um, not to follow that kind of a conventional wisdom. For example, uh, not to value those things that are hard to value, those material things. I think even Sheng Ren's learning is a little bit different uh, in the sense that Sheng Ren tends to learn to de-learn and relearn and trying to discern from you know the experiences of the common people what they have neglected or ignored and from that pattern uh, is gaining insights and wisdom and that's the true learning as opposed to the conventional learning which is a ceaseless or constant uh, acquisition and pursuit of some the latest idea or something very new because that one is the manifestation of some fundamentals so Ren, instead of kind of busy acquiring and trying to be knowledgeable and informed which has no end Ren tends to look beyond and beneath the surface of things and try to Gain from those very simple fundamental principles. Yeah, it makes me think very much of the difference between working in technology and, and working in psychology, that obviously mm. the wiring of the human mind hasn't hasn't changed for um, you know not much at all. And there's a lot of wisdom in looking at what heals the human heart and that doesn't change a lot i mean you can certainly apply different techniques but um, in technology even though there was principles in place of of computer science and that sort of thing constant churn and what you had to learn and keep up with to be kind of trendy it was a very fashionable industry mm -hmm. and if you didn't have the latest buzzwords on your resume you couldn't find work and that mm -hmm. sort of thing but of course like you could be a terrible programmer but just be able to talk about you know the latest technology framework or um kind of buzzwordy thing and you could get hired and but then for people who actually knew these deeper principles you you'd encounter these kind of frauds all the time that their resume mm -hmm. looked good but they really didn't have any depth of of understanding and that's what i i hear and what you you were saying it's it's these d deeper principles that matter and not kind of chasing after this whatever the flashy thing is it's so true because once you have the that fun understanding uh of the uh, deeper principles uh inferring from those dis principles uh those uh under that understanding sheds light on so many different things another just uh, to your point uh recently i talked to a student who is undergraduate at cornell uh studying uh information uh technology uh he shared a similar idea i said i asked him you know what are you studying you know what courses are you taking I think, uh, you know, I got a, a, a feeling that he started to realize that while studying this subject, he better, you know, sometimes it's more kind of a tedious and difficult to focus on the fundamentals. But he said, you know, by focusing on these fundamentals so that no matter what things are changing, you know, I can always upgrade my knowledge instead of chasing the flashy ones, like, yeah. you know, the AI or machine learning, all these like, uh, you know, fancy, uh, you know, fancy uh, uh, topics. Yeah, so, so true. And I'm, I'm noticing we're getting close to our time for the week. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap up our last sentence in, in chapter 64. Mm -hmm. 一幅, 换目, 自然。
Therefore, the sage assists the 10,000 things in a natural way and dares not act of his own self-interest. Mm. And, and just a reminder that the 10,000 things in Tao Te Ching is basically just means everything under heaven, everything that's on earth, just sort of the, the physical plane of existence. And so what this is saying, going back to the sage is looking for harmony. The sage is looking to not, not ask the question, what do I want? What can I get out of this? But rather, what does this situation need? What's missing right now? What's missing in this scenario? And, and once I've discerned what's missing, now I want to try to provide that to create the harmony that this situation needs. Mm. So in other words, do the necessary, essential or necessary work, but not over doing anything or kind of meddling too much. If something is redundant or it's just out of your own ego or, you know, self, selfish desires, uh, which is not helping, you know, whatever that thing is, it's considered to be uh, unnecessary. Yeah, I think that's a great distinction to make, too, that it has to be not this mindset of like, oh, the sage is here to fix everything and let me come in and like, you know, make sure that I fix everything and handle everything that it's that that's being a busybody is not what this is about. It's it's not about that at all. It's it like how you're saying it's it's doing as as little as as possible and doing just enough and no more. And if nothing is required, then you know, feel free to to putz about or or, or piddle ab about and um, not feel like you have to always be making yourself useful or, or important. And so there is this um, where where Wu Wei is is such a critical concept because it, it really has to be about trying to do nothing that it if it's this this mentality of you know i have to always actively be creating harmony and it's up to me that's not the way of of the dao that it's not up to you that dao sort you're you're following the dao you know it's it's not the sort of um way of of being um feeling like you have to be pushing things I have a question. Uh, when we, uh, you know, read this chapter, you know, a lot of the observations uh, from our daily life uh, resonate with us. I wonder if we know it, why don't we do it? Why behaviorally we tend to meddle too much or, or grasp too hard? Well, there's a, a great book called Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, and it talks about humans are special in the sense that we have two ways of thinking. There's a quick, intuitive, system one type of thinking that's very instinctual, and then there's a system two type of thinking that is slower, it, re it requires more effort, we have to be very deliberate with it. That's when we think about our executive functioning and really making more careful observations. And that one's a lot harder to do because we have to, we have to um, really utilize more energy to engage it. And, and since our brains want us to survive, there's a tension there where our system one thinking can really you know, dictate how we make decisions. And so even if we know something intellectually, if we're not careful about engaging our system two thinking, we're going to be driven by our system one thinking. We're just going to, we're going to reach for that next 
second or third cookie. We're going to just sit down in front of the TV and kind of shut down and avoid rather than really engaging our thought process of, oh, you know, what do I actually value today? What do I want this day to be about and, and make a different decision? And, and that's why we have that tension between the two types of thinking. One is easy and one is difficult. Mm. And, and people do tend to do what's easier and take the shortcuts. And so we have to be very active mentally to, um, to do things the, the way that Tao Te Ching would, would ask us to do, you know, to, to look for what's very small and look for, for those beginnings, that's going to require more work. And, and we're inclined to, to not do that. Uh, you're saying that that requires more of a system two thinking, like the more deliberate thinking. Uh, yeah. If you start to detect things which are small, yeah, our, I mean, you have to look at this from a survival perspective. Mm -hmm. Every th thinking and, and having this big brain, that requires a lot of energy, a lot yes. of calories. And, <laughs> yes. and, and, and calories aren't free, particularly. We, we always forget that we evolved in a pre-civilized time and we didn't have endless food. I mean, people evolved before agriculture and farming. I mean, we, we starved a lot of times and what a horrible way to die that would be. But we had these big brains that could help us solve problems, but we were only ever intended for that to kick in enough to help us survive, not to just, you know, live lives that we value and and like nature didn't doesn't give a crap if we value our lives it just wants us to stay alive i mean having satisfying lives that's a a cultural construction nature doesn't care about us having lives that we value it just wants the species to continue and so to put more time and effort and effort effortfulness into thinking is going to require more calories and since calories in a pre-civilized environment that we evolved with them are going to be scarce we want to be able to make quick easy decisions rather than constantly having to do this overwrought way of thinking so being able to use system two thinking is a luxury of of our modern society Maybe during the early society, only a few people are able to do that because they consume more calorie than the rest of this, right? Uh, like, mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a saying in Chinese, uh, 劳心者治人, 劳力者治于人. So there's a separation of two kinds of people, people who use their mind and people who are using their manual force, right? So uh, this is actually from Mencius. Mencius said, the people who are engaged in their mind, they tend to be the, they are the ruling class of mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at one point, especially during uh, the modern period, this is politically incorrect because you're saying that, you know, a bunch of people sitting at the top of the pyramid. But, you know, just getting back to what you're saying, I could imagine that relative few people, because, you know, the resources available to them, they are to able to deliberate and think hard than the common people. Does that make sense? Uh, it does make sense. And, and, and politically correct or, or not, I think, you know, the reality is if, if we want to uh, observe nature is that there's genetic diversity a, mm. not just across species but within species that clearly there's genetic diversity when it comes to height weight skin color diseases health intelligence i mean there there really is a um a diversity and so it does make sense that there would be some proportion of a species that does do more system two type thinking and one that does more system one type thinking and not that one is better than the other i mean e it's even, like both right it's yeah a, they they need each other you can't have one without the other 
but it would make sense that if you're trying to survive, you would want some people who, um, you know, if, if everyone's sitting around doing the thinking, the species and the tribe isn't going to survive. You, you need a diverse of um, proclivities and, and interests and people who are more liberal and more conservative that, you know, diversity in, in our modern time, we've reduced it down to just this, you know, political identity groups, which is, right, right. you know, to me, very superficial. It doesn't really get at the heart of, of the diversity that really is required, which is a, a diversity of thought. Right. Exactly. And, and, and it's this diversity of, of thought that, that really um, is important that, that we have all these people interested in, in different things and seeing the world in, in different ways. And, and I don't want to get too much into this. Maybe we can talk about this more some other time because I think we could easily kind of end up on, on a, on a tangent because you, you and I are, are really good at, at running with these ideas. But I do think that it, it's, it is that tension between system one and system two thinking why, even if we know, um, this sort of stuff. Why is it so hard? And and that is exactly why it's so hard. Yeah, I think that that's a good theory. I uh, even on that theory, when I think about it and try to connect this to what Laozi is saying, maybe there's some kind of a deliberation or deliberateness in the instinctual, and maybe there's uh, in in other words, like system two thinking maybe according to this book, this theory is more on the rational and uh, intellectual aspect of it. What uh, Lao Tzu seemed to saying is, even at the instinctual level, like sheng ren, or intuitively, uh, there is a simpler way. We don't have to deliver that much through knowledge and, and experiences, but we can simplify that kind of thinking uh, still, that helps with our survival uh, by thinking about the fundamentals, observing the repeating patterns of doubt. Yeah. So in other words, how can we be the intelligent without being too knowledgeable? So it's a, a great, great question. Um, I think... Um, I think there's not an easy answer to that. I I feel like that's why we're studying Tao Te Ching, that we're we're trying to create that type of, of framework, that we're looking at some ancient wisdom that survived thousands of, of years. Mm -hmm. And for something to survive thousands of years, I think we can intuitively, instinctually, kind of system one thinking, be like, oh, there must be something to this. Why else would Pete, would it still be around and people be talking about it? And, and what you and I are trying to do, I feel like mm -hmm. we're now trying to take our system one thinking and, and slow down and really articulate a f um, some ideas around um, this, this, this text and, and 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 how do we do it? I, I feel like that's really the work of of our podcast and and our discussions before that and and leading up to it. That it's not a simple answer. It's it's sort of all these discussions that we're having. That that's exactly what we're trying to do. How can we have just the right amount of of knowledge and and not too much? Exactly. Yeah. It's going to be an uh, uh, ongoing discussion, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I feel like the time together to uh, you know study this chapter can help uh, facilitate you know our thoughts and our discussion around those you know very interesting topics. Me too, and uh, on this Thanksgiving weekend, just. Still very, very thankful for our, our time and what we're doing and, and how much gratitude I do have for our, our ability to, to spend this time together. Great.
So look forward to the next one. Take care. Take care.